is, it, it's an old city, it's on a peninsula, so land is at a premium, and it has a very, very complicated system of pipes underground. Some of the oldest pipes in the system are combined pipes. They carry both sewage and storm water. When it rains, the storm drain goes into that same sewer. We don't have enough capacity to be able to make it all the way to the treatment plant. So there's still 23 locations around the city that discharge that combined sewage and storm water into one of our receiving bodies. Including right behind me right here, where the extra water spills out into Casco Bay. And I'm standing looking at Back Cove right now. It's huge amount of bacteria pollution, huge amount of nitrogen pollution, everything else that's flushed down the toilet. Our wastewater treatment plants and East End wastewater treatment plant where Portland's waste goes is the largest in the state. They do so much to reduce the pollution that we cause as human beings. And so it's really important to get this water there to be properly treated than to let it go out into the bay where it can have very negative consequences, some that might linger for a very long time. This was a job the company had had their eye on for some time and we were very excited about the project. Big design build really hadn't taken a lot of big work before then. And I want to say it was August of 19, 2019. We were formally awarded the project, which was our largest project to date at just under $40 million. This is a combined sewer overflow storage project. What this project does is it captures that CSO and holds on to it for a period of time until the wastewater treatment plant here has capacity to treat the CSO. This project, back Cove south, it's made of cast in place concrete tanks. So it's four separate 875,000 gallon tanks. If you split the project up into four or five small projects, it would have been four or five fairly large projects by themselves. Things started out really great. From an engineer standpoint, it was how do we keep the project within that construction cost that Sergeant committed to? Between the tank construction and the pipe installation and, and then building a sports field on top of it. When you split them up, it made it a little less intimidating to look at. The sheeting installation had gone well. The upper framework had been put in. We were in the process of excavating it out and pretty quickly figured out that stuff was moving a lot more than it, than it was supposed to be moving. The low strength soils were almost no strength soils, right? And, and, and we learned that after the fact. So I found out we had a, a geotechnical issue there on March 4th of 2022. Uh, also happened to be my son's birthday. So we were trying to have a little birthday cake that evening when I got the message. And uh, you know, on a personal side, it removes you from your life when you're that worried about something like that. I was actually on vacation out uh, in the western half of the United States, waiting to jump a plane to come home for the end of my vacation when I got a text message from Glenn Adams that said, we've had an issue with the support of excavation on tank three. We needed to remove everyone from the hole for safety. Enjoy your flight back, have a safe flight. We'll talk about when you get back. And then of course, you don't want to overreact and you know the project team is working on it. You know that they're gonna do whatever they need to do to keep everybody safe. And so then you sort of start to wait, but it was a long slog of waiting to figure out what happened. Thankfully, no one was hurt, and it happened a period of time no one was working. But pretty quickly, within the next couple of days, we were all of the mindset that our hearts were in our feet still, but we had no choice but to move forward, and we had to start finding solutions. We did some things that we just thought were in the best interest of safety. We didn't cut any corners on that. If, that, if something needed to be done, the project team was like, we're going to do whatever it takes to be safe. We ended up contracting with SGH out of Boston to help us guide the process of getting it back on track. And we used another engineer out of Boston, GEI, who uh, actually took over as engineer of record. So we had people from all over the world on these calls. They had people from Norway on these calls that had seen similar soils in Norway. And I had a moment where I stood back and just thought, how incredible was it to see these type of resources from around the world, these really intelligent people coming together on this problem in Portland, Maine. There was a period of time where we questioned, could Tank 3 ever be built? Could Tank 2 ever be built? 
Uh, luckily, we were able to get through that with the help of uh, some outside third-party geotechnical consultants. Keller North America came in uh, and did jet grout uh, columns under the entirety of tank number three. Which is a process that you take a rod and go down into the ground and it spins and displaces the ground with water as they bring it back up and they then add type two cement as well. So that creates a concrete column in the ground basically. It was a messy process, but it, it worked. And, and when they were done, we had a really stable coffer dam. And those gave us the strength that we needed to finish our excavation down to subgrade to, to get things prepped for NS Giles to complete tank number three. Everybody really put their effort into trying to get the job completed and wrapped up. If anybody had thoughts of, well, it's time to abandon this, I never heard it, never crossed my mind. I'm really happy with this solution. This treats both the most polluted storm water and sewage water. Now these storage conduits give away for that most polluted water over the winter months to be stored before it can go to the treatment plant. We'll capture it, we'll store it, and when the storm is passed, we'll pump it to the East End Wastewater Treatment Facility for treatment before discharge out into Portland Harbor. This project is gonna reduce the amount of CSO that comes into Back Cove by, I, I wanna say it's 75%, and it's gonna take off the two largest polluting outlets in the state of Maine will be taken largely offline, and the, the first flush, the dirtiest, one inch of a given rainstorm or snow melt event will be captured by these tanks. The environmental aspect of the project, it's, it's cleaning up the waters, just making quality of life better for everyone around. At the end of the day, it's 70, 80 million gallons of sewage that doesn't make it into the ocean. I think the most important thing out of Back Cove South is that even a difficult project, we will finish. We finish what we start, and we did. I am extremely proud of what we've done there as a company and we should be extremely proud. It was a job done well, done right, despite the challenges. We stood by it, we worked our way through it, we had some great partners, HB Fleming, NS Giles, a lot of folks that helped us here, Mollison Electric, that stuck with it in that period of time too and we wouldn't be where we're at today without them. We're going to celebrate this one. You know, all you're going to see is a soccer field and playground equipment, but there is one impressive piece of infrastructure underground there back home south that I know I'm never going to forget.